I mean, it was amazing. It was two and a half years in the making for me, I guess my my involvement in it. And, you know, one thing that I think a lot of people wouldn't know is that I really got to grow with this character and, and go through this journey with Danny. When I first started filming, you know, we didn't have the whole script of what it would be. I didn't know how it would end. I didn't know who the villain was. I didn't know any of that information. I just had two weeks of content, essentially. And we filmed that, and then, you know, we'd come back a few weeks later, film some more. So it was amazing to see how Danny's story unfolded, how, you know, not just her story unfolded, but how she emotionally and psychologically grew and, and made these decisions and how she came to be who she was and how she came to justify her actions of not fleeing but fighting and so i think it made it very relatable too of being able to go through that journey with her and understand her motivations well when i first started it I, like i didn't i've never done anything like this before like any type of motion capture or anything like that I was just filming uh, tv so um i actually watched um youtube uh, videos of like previous games and how they're shot and I'm kind of get an idea of what to do so that's basically all that i did before and then kind of just get into the suit and just go with it <laughs> i think i think that is what i like about her the most well i mean aside from i think the obvious of like she's smart she's she's strong she's resourceful she's resilient things like that I think that's something that everyone would want um, to be. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that make her so relatable is that, and, and I think it's something I tried to bring to the role as well um, and how I played it, is that those strengths and those weaknesses are kind of what make her who she is. And, and those, those weaknesses are her strengths in a way because by having those weaknesses or those soft spots for certain people or certain characters in the game. So, yeah, I mean, I think that... I think these are the kind of things in a character that make them relatable and that justify kind of why they would do these actions. And when you're playing a character like that is this strong and, and sacrifices her life for, you know, a revolution. And it's something that me as Nisa, I mean, I've never been through. I can't relate to, but I need to really relate to. I need to play this character and I need to make people feel it. And so, you know, when I pull on those kind of you know, what might be interpreted as weaknesses for that character, and I use them to motivate the character, I think that's kind of why or where I can draw parallels in my own life and then play that character and understand why she's making those decisions and what motivated her actions. And so I think that's kind of my favorite part of her is that relatability and, that, and the ability for me to connect with my own experiences and apply them to the character and her decisions and motivations to, to act and, and you know, to make the choices she makes. Yeah, like, um, so it's basically like, it's almost like doing theater in, in a way, because like, there's like really long takes and everything. And and then if we, if we happen to like, screw up a scene, we have to take it back from the beginning. So it's, it's good training to like, to do long takes if you have to do that, so. There was a learning curve for sure. I mean, when you're in this fictional world of Yada, in you know uh, this revolution against this fascist, it's like, but you're really actually just standing in a gray room with a very tight bodysuit on, and you're supposed to feel cool, but you actually just feel like stiff. Things like that. I mean, there's so many technical aspects you have to get over, and then on top of that, you have to create the actual world around you to be able to act in it. So there's these technical aspects, the physical aspect. And then the imagination and creativity that goes into it. So it's, I think it's a skill that every actor should have. I think it's a skill that, you know, I'm really lucky that I got to practice for two and a half years. I remember after the first two weeks telling Sean, who plays male Danny, how I felt that going into auditions now, I felt at such ease. I was like, I can create the world around me like that. Like, it's so... It, it came so naturally after a little bit. So that's kind of like one of the best things I feel like I took from from the mocap experience too. But it was definitely challenging. I mean, it's it's hard to imagine how I would have approached the role if I wasn't pretending to be in a dark cave and I actually was in a dark cave. Just little things like that you wouldn't even think of until you know you're actually on the floor 
and you're reminded like, oh, you're not squinting. She can't actually see. And I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> I like um, basically like I like to slip into like different accents and voices and stuff like that and the way that the character moves is very different from me so I really felt like I wasn't being my, myself at, at, at all right so um, yeah it's, it's like kind of just stepping into a, a different person's shoes completely and then when we get to see what Danny actually looks like it's like it's not me right so it's like a completely different person which was so cool mm -hmm. yeah um, I watched like some documentaries on like Che Guevara and um, and like uh, some um, some Fidel Castro documentaries and all that so kind of get like that vibe of what it was like during that time you know it's a present day uh, story it's still it's still kind of the same so i that's basically all that i did for that yeah. and like well um so i grew up with like i spent a lot of time with my spanish grandparents and so like the accent for me was really easy to p pick up e even though it's like a cuban based character okay. but um i guess if if i could pick one um inspiration that like from a film or whatever is uh his character from the movie blow uh it was johnny depp's partner in, in the film and i kind of just got like kind of his like swag in a way from that it's just like a little bit of an inspiration i think they're gonna like how um danny has more of a personality than the previous um protagonist because i'm actually like i've played Far Cry 3, 4, so like I kind of have an idea of like what, what like what's going to be uh, like what's going to set Danny apart from the others, and uh, Danny's in a lot of cutscenes, like lots of voice during uh, like all all the gameplay and all that. So I just think players are going to really enjoy uh, being like fully immersed into that world. Well, I haven't seen everything. I've actually only mm. seen what you've seen. So, okay. <laughs> no, I, I'm not just saying that. Um, they're holding it. They're holding out on me. Um, yeah, I haven't seen everything. But did anything surprise me? I mean, I think if anything, I was just more impressed. I think I was surprised by how good the facial recognition and the animation was. I think that was really surprising because I think that there's kind of this. Um, Motion capture acting is kind of seen as a niche in itself, but it's getting a lot more recognition in the film and TV world. And also, you know, there's a lot of movies that are using it now, like Avatar and, you know, Lord of the Rings used it, things like that. So there is a lot more, I think, respect for the motion capture acting world. And I think that to me was just seeing it firsthand. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And now I see why it is actually a skill set separate to acting. So yeah, I think that yeah. was like the biggest surprise was just seeing the, like the how good the I guess animation was. I mean, I didn't really think about that too much. Like when I was performing, you know, I was just trying to, you know, just like stay in character, stay stay true to the character. So like, I mean, I would think about that outside of filming, like when uh, I'm at home, because like I said, like I'm a gamer too, so um, it's kind of like. It would be like a little surreal for me to like think oh i'm in a video game now and it's gonna be there forever and millions of people are gonna play it so like i just try not to think about that too much because i think it would kind of make me nervous <laughs> yeah you could be like 80 years old and still th throw on yeah. the motion capture suit and the dust and the camera and they can m make you look like you're 25 so <laughs> yeah yeah uh, don't skip any cutscenes, please we you worked a lot. We worked really hard on those. <laughs> yeah. That that's the best answer. And it's so funny because we had talked about that in the early days, being like, you know, I think we were both just like in awe about how much goes into these cinematics. It is really like making a movie from every aspect. And, you know, I think it informs the story and it and it informs the story in such a beautiful way and yes we put a lot in, of work into it and we want people to see that but it it if you really want to experience the far cry story you will watch the cinematics 